Fantasy Philosophers is brought to you by Fantasy-Info.com. Welcome to Draft Board Update number 8 for this year. Uh, there's four sections that I want to talk about in this update. We're going to talk about Javid Best. We're going to talk about Steve Smith from the Giants. We're going to talk about Sean Green. And we're going to talk about Justin Forsett running back for Seattle. So let's look at Javid Best. Uh, update here, I know that there's people that still uh, like Kevin Smith to some degree, think he's going to play in more of a uh, RBBC with Best this year, but I wasn't really a big fan of that because Kevin Smith coming off of the late season ACL injury, uh, I just didn't think he'd be ready to be at full strength. And even when he is, I'm sorry, as much heart as he has on the field, he's just not the impact running back that they need. That's why they went out and got best. And that's why right now, even reports out there, they're giving him every opportunity to be the starter and be the feature guy on this team. Uh, because Best is a rookie, we do have we, at some point we will start seeing Smith in there a little bit more as Best can get a little dinged up with that offensive line that he has. It suggests even more so that he'll probably get a little dinged up this season. But I think he's going to be a guy that's definitely, definitely worth having as at least a flex play option for your team this season. As far as Smith, again, he's really not relevant for fantasy unless Best goes down. And even then, uh, it's hard to see what he's going to do with the ACL. I know he's had a pretty decent camp and that he's responded well. But, hey, it's a little bit different once you get into the regular season. And we'll see what he can really do with that ACL, kind of like Wes Welker. We'll really see what happens with the wear and tear of the season. That's what really starts beating you up, especially when you have an injury like that. So let's move on to Steve Smith. He had a uh, slight uh, groin problem. He's been off of his uh, – off of practice and everything of late. They took retests on the groin. It's supposed to be just minor. So this is a good thing. We'll keep you updated on Steve. Uh, I wouldn't really say that really impacts his fantasy value right now because he has plenty of time to let this thing get healed up and get ready. So if you're drafting later in drafts, you'll have the advantage. And that's why, again, I say that fantasy owners probably should wait till towards at least the end of August to somewhere in September there early to take your drafts because you want to have every advantage at least to see what the injuries are before you go and take key players. So we'll keep you updated on him. Sean Green, uh, his head coach came out and said that he's going to be the bell cow in the offense. This is something that we want to hear because Green is projected to be a top 15 to top 10 fantasy back this season. So we want to make sure, to as best we can, that he's going to get the main bulk in this offense, and it's not going to be LaDainian Tomlinson chipping in a lot. I still think LaDainian might get a decent amount of work early in the season, as we're seeing those trends with guys like Beanie Wells, uh, Jamal Charles, excuse me. They're veterans that are around them. They're still going to probably get work, and it may still be the same with New York. But in the long run, Sean Green should be the workhorse on this team. Justin Forsett, he's the final one on this list. Uh, there was an ESPN analyst, excuse me, I forget the name, but uh, was was coming out saying that he thought Justin was going to see the major, major bulk of this running attack work in Seattle. Uh, I I've written about him when we did our player rankings for him that I thought that, you, boy, you just go back and look at the numbers between him and Julius Jones, and it really wasn't comparable. I mean, Justin had about a 5.4 yard per carry average. He was explosive, and he was very – really, I watched him. I went to a Niner Seahawk game early in the season, and I was amazed – how he just did not go down very easily. Even when a guy like Patrick Willis would get his mitts on him, it seemed like he was he was struggling to get this little guy down. Uh, he's a little he's so he's stronger than he looks, and he kind of played that way back in Cal with the Bears. Uh, he was just underrated for what he can really do as a player. Uh, I was amazing to me that Bonehead, I, I refer to him as Bonehead, that's Jim Moore Jr., I, I refer to him as Bonehead, wouldn't start him over Julius late in the season after he had shown what he could do when Julius was out and injured. And I think that really hurt fantasy owners. I know that hurt me. I was hoping he was going to get in and keep that run going, and it sure did not happen. So now that Bonehead's out of the situation, hopefully Pete Carroll uh, won't be a Bonehead also, and he'll just go ahead and use Justin Forsett, probably like he should as long as he's playing at the level or close to the level he was playing last year. For more fantasy football information, go to fantasy-info.com and sign up for our free e-newsletter. 
good luck in your 2010 fantasy football league. As an added bonus, the Fantasy Info guys will include their five secret tips for success in fantasy football with your free subscription.